Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the final boss of Hellcat owners. And before you open your yap, bro, listen, those, those Ruchi wheels throw the whole build off. Listen, this car has more curves than your wife in a sundry. Bro, this thing nastier than a high school teacher at a frat party. But that isn't the most shocking part about this build. Not the color, just the color, not just the, the wheels. No, 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 no. This thing shits and get, and you may notice that big ass supercharger sitting on the top of it. This man has two and a half K20 four cylinders worth of supercharger sitting on top of this car. That's right, people. That's a 4.5 liter Whipple you're looking at. Y'all you, don't understand where I'm coming from. Superchargers that big don't whine. They Whitney Houston. No, like y'all ain't understanding. This man has a whole 4.6 two valve worth of supercharger sitting on top of a V8. Oh, I'm talking about this man's car sounds like a bunch of seagulls taking an Alka-Seltzer. Well, oh, this man's car sounds like a virgin's first time getting some. Uh -huh. Y'all don't understand why this is so nuts, right? The guys and gals at SRT literally went to a strip club, railed a line of coke off a stripper's ass, and decided to give a 700 plus horsepower sedan to the lower and middle class. It was affordable. Before that, think about this. Before the Hellcat, when was the last time a car company gave the people a under a hundred thousand dollar sedan or coupe with 700 horsepower i'll wait nobody in the topic of factory race cars you often talk about gm's copo camaros or their 632 big block camaro that makes a thousand horsepower or the thousand and like 25 or 29 horsepower from the dodge demon 170 hell even the hellcats and dodge demons right yeah but ford they weren't too worried about none of these vehicles because the shit that these car companies are doing now they had already did with svt what you're looking at is the 10 liter boss concept now this is a 10 liter 429 V8, naturally aspirated, under the hood of an S197 Cobra. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. This thing did 0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds in 1999. It did the quarter mile in like 10 and a half seconds. You know how fast that is? But you're not understanding the details of why this thing was so potent. This was a factory drag car that they knew they were going to have trouble selling because of the maintenance on this thing. Do you realize, okay, 10 liters doesn't equal 429 cubic inches. Of course it doesn't. I know you're probably saying it right now as you're typing in the comments. No, they bored and stroked that 429 to 598 cubic inches. This was a literal drag car from factory. This thing had NASCAR headers, a custom intake manifold, 72 pound an hour injectors, and it also had a three speed C6 transmission. And the most bonkers reason to why they built this in the first place, it wasn't to compete with Dodge. It wasn't even to compete with, you know, Chevrolet. No, they built this entire monstrosity, this Frankenstein of part. Bro, this thing has a four nine inch rear end from factory, built, fully built to compete with a Porsche 911 in a straight line. Do you know how gangster that is? Why don't anybody talk about the Kia Stinger anymore? I'll explain why. You see, it was 2018 when Kia unveiled their Stinger, the GT2 Stinger, right? 3.3 liter twin turbo V6. Well, on paper it was pretty good, but people couldn't justify paying for a vehicle that they had to drop the entire drivetrain, loosen the engine mount up just to get to the starter that was always faulty. Like it looked like it came from a Power Wheels car from Walmart. That's how bad that starter issue was. And not only that, but these stingers were about 50, maybe $60,000, you know, or more depending on dealership markups. And people looked at these vehicles like, wait, this is a kill. Why would I pay that much money for something that back in the day could only get you from point A to point B any extra and it was going to break down. So people pretty much was like, okay, why would I pay $50,000 for a Kia Stinger when I could just buy a 5.7 Charger for about $30,000, like with low mileage. Aside from all of the issues and the controversy to why people didn't buy these things, well, they do make 365 horsepower with the capabilities to handle close to 500 without having to do anything but like upgraded down pipes, maybe upgraded turbos, and a tune. That's it. 